Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Tuesday, Tuesday, May 21st, and the energies in the day adds up or reduce to number seven vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the spirit animal, we have the bear. The bear used to come out so much before and it has slowed down so much lately. And yesterday's message had something, I feel like when it comes to today's energy or even say yesterday's energy, um, I feel like something from Sunday from for some of us or Saturday is like carrying through all the way till today, Tuesday. But um, the bear energy comes out and the bear, the way the bear came out, it brought me to a lack of order or connectedness when it comes to the seasons of life, when it comes to change. I think of like how we could easily um, flow into a new season. Um, the image that's coming to mind is whenever a person, um, say, imagine you bought some fish. And you have the fish tank and it's all set up and everything and the water in there is at a good temperature when you're adding the new fish to the tank you can't just drop them into that water based on what i saw growing up you have to take the bag that they came in and sit it in the water that is in the tank and then after a while open up the bag they're in so that you know they could flow into the tank but you have to adjust them to the temperature. So when it comes to today's energies, there's something about having a hard time adjusting to the temperature. It's like the saying that's also coming to mind is like, that's a tough pill to swallow. So there's something that's hard to accept. But I look at, say, today's energy on um, Tuesday. Tuesday is associated with Mars energy. And Mars is in Aries. Mars is in a place where it wants all the smoke and i look at how like say it conjuncts the north node so it's like i'm motivated by myself and i got some ish to do that's where mars is at that's the type of time that mars is on and also too chiron is not that far away so mars is also in a position that's also saying i'm motivated by the issue that i've been through i've been through some things those things will not define me but best believe these things have made me stronger so i feel like mars is on some type of energy where it's like <laughs> i'm laughing in my mind because i'm like mars is on some mars is on some different energy and with Mars on the type of energy it's on and the energies in the day adding up to the number seven vibration, the energies in today could kind of feel somewhat like driving under the influence. Driving under the influence for the simple fact that Neptune energy um, deals with, you know, when I think of Neptunian energy, I think of this thick fog and not being able to see things clearly. And instead of trying to see through the fog, you're better off sensing, feeling your way through the fog. And with Mars energy, it's like we want to bulldoze our way through. And that could be dangerous. Like it's best to sit and feel your way through. Sit and feel your way through in a sense like sit and be reflective and wait until you're told it's time to move. But with the bear energy and the way it came out, it's like having a hard time accepting or transitioning into a thing. I look at the moon being in Scorpio and the moon is a part of a T-square. The moon in Scorpio is opposing Mercury and Taurus. Mercury and Taurus wants to say all the things that are safe and familiar 
And the moon and Scorpio energy, the inner world wants to be in control. Um, Mercury and Taurus is speaking like a sense of authority or some kind of an authority because with the moon and Taurus, I mean, with Mercury and Taurus, it's like, I'm used to being here. I'm used to being here. So I'm going to talk like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to talk like I know what's up because this is familiar. This is a familiar space. And also too, speaking about the things that make me feel good and only wanting to hear the things that sound good and make me feel good. And Moon and Scorpio deals with the darker side of things. Like, you know, I think of Taurus energy as in, okay, so I think of Taurus energy as those uh, Taurus and Pisces energy would remind me of coming across those shirts that say good vibes only. And when I see that, I get the whole good vibes only thing, but I feel like that's so toxic to me. Good vibes only. The reason why I think that's so toxic to me when people are like good vibes only, I feel like that shows people who don't like to deal with ish because sometimes the vibes ain't gone be good um, when there's a problem, when there's misunderstanding. In order for people to you know, come to a place of clear understanding, sometimes the vibes will be off. But it's like trying to keep the vibes good at all times. For me, that means tiptoeing over things and acting like things didn't happen. And the only way to have a connection in that kind of environment is to have a fake one. Because people are different and people are always changing. So because people are different and people are always changing, there will be moments when there's misunderstanding or even vibes. But like the whole good vibes only to me, like it, it will kind of remind me of like, like I won't say, I don't want to say it feels gaslighting, but something about it just feels off where it's like you can't speak up because it's like, oh, you coming with this vibe. Oh, you coming with this vibe. And I bet more than likely, like, you know, the kind of person that's like avoiding the vibe, dealing with hard things probably look around in their life and a whole bunch of ish is piled up that needs to be addressed. A bunch of unread mail piled up needs to be addressed. Don't realize a long time ago that this thing or that thing has been, you know, your insurance been cut off. Let's say we don't have the internet um, to where everything is um, non-digital. It's like a bunch of unread messages that needs to be addressed. So when it comes to today's energy, um, the moon and Scorpio to me is diving into all the bad vibe stuff that we want to act like don't exist. Mercury and Taurus wants to focus on good vibes only. The things that make me feel safe, the things that make me feel good. Like don't speak about this, don't speak about that. I saw something the other day that said something about what's more evil. I don't remember how it goes exactly, but it was someone saying what's more eviler than anything else is a person trying to make you think that certain things aren't happening. So for me, I'm aware of the fact that anything can happen and a lot of things are happening. But at the same time, I, I choose not to give certain things my attention. But when it comes to say like an issue, I feel like that's different where say within your relationship, your friendship or whatever, there's a misunderstanding because that person matters. You're going to want to try to understand them and also to them understand you. So to me, that's a different situation than, um, you know, acting like we're good when clearly that person is wounded. Clearly they're hurt. Clearly everything is not all good. And that creating a T-square to um, T -square to Pluto and Aquarius brings me to something about our friend groups and changes that are happening within our friend groups. Changes that are happening within our friend groups that restricts communication in some way. And also to getting in the way of your money. Something about friend groups or certain groups and something getting in, getting in the way of the money. The way how I would see that when I say getting in the way of one's money, I think of like, say, certain changes happening within certain industries and from the changes happening within the industry. OK, so I remember coming across something on YouTube and I don't I forgot like, OK, so it's this guy who's an investor 
and he creates videos on financial investing. And he was saying how um, he was speaking about, I think it's called the Stripper Chronicle. I don't remember the exact name of it, but it was in some kind of financial paper where it's like the strippers um, started saying how much sales were going down in the strip club. And from that shift, they like the strippers can predict whenever we're going to have a major shift within the financial markets based on what they experience within the strip club. And um, because like when you think of that environment, you know, and when people stop spending there to create a sense of comfort or whatever, it's like things must really be down. And when I think of that T-square, that's what I'm thinking of, like that shift in that environment where Pluto and Aquarius, that's the strip club environment. And then Mercury and Taurus and Taurus and Scorpio, that's the environment itself. There's the Scorpionic aspect of the environment. And then there's the Taurus aspect of the environment. But to me, both belong to the environment. And the T-square with Pluto brings me to, yeah, the stripper. I forgot what it's called, but it's like, uh, I think some years back, a stripper had predicted the crash that was coming based on sales in the strip club. And, you know, the strippers are starting to see those same kind of stats again, which goes to show that you could learn from anywhere if you choose to be a humble student in this university called life, where I could see some people who think they're too good to be listening to these women in this industry when clearly they have access to stats. And, you know, based on past experiences, they were correct. Uh, more. I'm gonna go with the one on the the bottom. Um, so with the tarot that comes out, we have the seven of wands in the upright position. So with the seven of wands in the upright position, this brings me to the like feeling defensive about something, like feeling the need to have to defend something. And um, when, I, when I look at the energies in today and look at the T-score being made to the moon, yeah, there is there does feel like there is a need to be defensive when it comes to something. But I feel like um, that's not the kind of energy that will solve the problem, whatever problem that is um, showing its head today. I feel like what would be beneficial today is to surrender into whatever one is feeling, bust out the journal and do some reflecting on some shadow energies that might be coming up. You could just journal about whatever it is that you're feeling, or you could take the journaling to the next level, journal about whatever it is that you're feeling and, 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 and debate, question the truth in these beliefs that got you feeling whatever it is that you feeling. Because in order for something to make you feel some way, you must believe it. So when you address these beliefs that you have that are limiting, you might realize that it's time to let them go. It's time to let them go. Or um, also too with today's energy. Um, yeah, to me journaling, but like inspiration. Um, yeah, like inspiration, acting from a place of inspiration is what is beneficial, not acting from a place of fear. And when it comes to this energy here, you might feel like you have to defend something. But I honestly don't believe that you have to defend what's yours. It might be delusional and silly of me. But when I think about what's mine, like I don't have to defend or fight for what belongs to me. Yes, I have to take action in certain situations and align myself up um, for it to flow through the pipeline that it's going to come through. But other than aligning myself up, like I don't need to fight for what's mine. So I don't need to be in competition with them or fight them for what's mine. Because if it's mine, I don't need to fight them for it. I think of it like a relationship where it's like, if that person, if you got to fight for them, then they don't belong to you. You know, like they say, they belong to the streets. So you don't got to fight for what's yours. Keep that in mind. You don't have to fight for what's yours. You might have to align yourself up for it to flow into your world. You might have to work on yourself so that you can maintain it. Maintaining it meaning that you're constantly a frequency, you're constantly a match for the frequency of it. So you might need to, you know, raise your frequency and keep your frequency a match for this lifestyle or this thing. 
but you don't got to fight for it. You don't got to fight anybody else for it if it's yours. And even in the thought of a competition um, where someone, it appears that they're fighting for what's theirs. If it's yours, more than likely when you're in the space, when you're in the environment, it'll almost feel like, um, like, like you're having fun. Like you're just showing up and doing what you do. You know, you, it, you don't feel like you're killing yourself in order to be a part of it, in order to make it happen. If it's yours, you know, I believe what's for me can only be for me. And the universe will direct my steps so that I could show up and be in alignment to receive it. So when it comes to today's energy, some things might come up that might feel like they trigger you, trigger you to feel like you need to defend or fight for what's yours. But what's for you can only be for you. You don't have to fight anybody for it. And when it comes to today's energy, today's energies are one for just straight up reflection, trying to um, do too much today might not result well. Like I said, it's like driving under the influence or driving super fast through fog. You'll crash. You'll crash. Today is one of those days to just surrender and reflect and let the truth come through. There's some truth that you need to understand when it comes to something. You just got to let the truth come through. And once the truth comes through, like, don't act like you didn't hear what you just heard. Like, I think of how sometimes we ask for things. Like, I think of the person who books a reading with someone or even clicks on a pick a card reading. And the pick a card reading tells you everything that you already knew to be true about the situation. And instead of accepting the confirmation and moving on to try to, like, make things better or whatever, a person clicks on another reading to the point where they're booking and buying readings so someone could tell them something other than what they know to be true. It's like, don't waste your energy, don't waste your money. Just be honest with yourself. You know, allow whatever needs to come through to come through and just be honest with yourself. Because a lot of the times we fight so hard for things that we don't even want in the first place. We don't even want that thing in the first place. And for whatever reason, we convince ourselves that this thing means or will mean certain things about us. And it's just just a waste of energy, just a waste of energy. But it was a pleasure sharing this message with you. Hey guys, I want to share with you seven benefits of getting a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session. The first one is understanding your internal programming. The second one is becoming more clear about your purpose and passion. The third is setting goals for success. The fourth is awareness of strength and areas of improvement. And the fourth one was foundational for me because whenever you're aware of your weaknesses, no one can use them against you. And when you're aware of your strengths, that makes you unstoppable. And that is why I say self-awareness is a superpower. The fifth benefit is removing obstacles. We first have to become aware of a thing in order to remove it in the first place. The sixth benefit is understanding relationship dynamics. We don't have to change the people in our lives. We have to become aware of ourselves and start from there and everything changes. And the seventh benefit is upcoming transits. If that's something that you would like to look into because you're planning for something or you just want to be aware. So if you're interested in booking a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session or learning more about it, the link to book or the link to send me an email for questions are both within the description box below. If you'd like to check out my Patreon where I share exclusive content, the link to check out what's happening on Patreon is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a purple heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.